every afternoon after five o'clock, somebody, men, several cars would park and they'd stop and visit and drink beer. And so uh, the kids in town thought they called it the Beverage Bridge because they were drinking. <laughs> The Beverage Suspension Bridge. For over a century, it has provided Central Texans safe passage over the sometimes tumultuous and flood-prone San Saba River. The bridge spans a clearance of 140 feet and is one of the last remaining bridges of its kind in the nation. Like many historic bridges, however, the Beverage suffered its share of deterioration and increasing safety concerns finally led to its closure in 2002. After a new concrete bridge was constructed nearby, the beverage's record of long-standing service had seemingly come to an end. In the spring of 2003, the Texas Department of Transportation's Brownwood District began investigating ways to preserve and possibly restore the beverage bridge for the San Saba community. Apparently, at one point, this was hit by a car. Charles Walker of TxDOT's Bridge Division leads the team in examining the old cables and anchors. It did some damage. So the problem now is, can we splice new wire into this cable, probably replacing this entire section in here, at least all the damaged wires. We'll take some samples of these wires and have them tested to see if the properties of the steel have changed any since we uh, heated it with the uh, original welding and then now cutting this pipe off. And then we'll sample some of the wire at another location and try to get a sense of what kind of strength wire we're dealing with. Check the condition of it. And these, this is added very recently, but these the parallel wire cable was built up and, and anchored off in the ground, and we don't know what's in the ground, um, but it could be just a large field of piling that the wires are tied off to, and we, ex we believe that they would be uh, anchored to a toggle bar that would be attached to this field of piling, and that the main cable wires are attached to the toggle bar. And what you don't know is what's the condition of this cable under the ground. And you can already see that it's beginning to look embrittled. When you can bend this kind of wire like that, it's, it's getting very brittle. But from, the, from the perspective of re, rehabbing this bridge as it is, we've got uh, the issues with the cable. We also have the issues with the towers. And the towers are, are from the 1890s. The towers also just kind of disappear into the ground so that we don't know what's going on underground. But at the surface of the ground, we, we're starting to see perforation, um, corrosion, where there's little pinholes appearing around the base of the tower legs. While the Beverage Bridge was partially reconstructed after a 1938 flood, the tower supports were left untouched. The team's inspection reveals the tower's need for new foundations, but not without effort to preserve the integrity of its original design. This is the original construction. This would have been put in in the 1890s when the bridge was built. According to a newspaper article from the 1890s, there is a, a masonry footing below the surface, and these towers are founded onto that somehow. We're not going to be able to excavate down and see what those look like, but we're going to try to avoid, go far enough out with our drill shaft so that we avoid disturbing the old masonry footing. To truly understand the importance of restoring the Beverage Bridge, we must first take a look back at its history. As Betty Jo Miller from San Saba explained, 
the bridge was not named for the beverages consumed under the shade tree at its approach, but was in truth named for the man who led the San Saba County Commission in its creation. Captain John H. Beveridge from Cork, Ireland. He came to Texas in 1849 and settled in the area north of the San Saba River. He built a dam on the river and operated a grain mill and cotton gin. The dam, which was used as a bridge to cross the river, became known as the Beveridge Crossing. On March 7, 1896, the San Saba County Commissioner's Court appointed Beveridge to supervise construction of a bridge. A few days later, Bridge designers Flynn Moyer Company of Weatherford, Texas were chosen to design and build the new bridge. William Flynn was a, was a bridge builder who had teamed up with E.E. E. E. Runyon and he and Runyon built several of the cable stayed wire bridges and then uh, Runyon disappears from the records but Flynn continued to build and he built uh, he was very innovative and he built several different types of bridges. Successfully competing with bridge builders from the Midwest, William Flynn's cable bridge techniques endured for at least four decades after his death in 1904. The Beveridge Bridge was originally a stiffened state cantonary suspension bridge, similar to the bridge shown here. But the Beveridge's stiffening trusses were removed during the 1930s restoration leaving the bridge a mix of 1890s and 1930s engineering. TxDOT's challenge was not only to restore the bridge to a functional use, but also to be as accurate as possible in preserving the historic modifications. The historic engineering record of the National Park Service came to Texas and did a survey and did some research on the early suspension bridges in Texas, and they found a relative of William Flynn who had a bunch of photos of the early bridges that his uh, grandfather had built. And from those photos, they're uh, really great photos, we can see um, exactly what those early bridges look like. Lamar Johansson, who lives in the area, asked me one day if I knew anything about a bridge with my name on it, with the Flynn name on it. And I told him the story that my great-grandfather built bridges. And he said, well, does, I think it says something like Flynn and, and a, a Moyer or someone. And I said, yes, it was the Flynn Moyer Bridge Company in, uh, out, out of Weatherford. And he said, well, we've traveled over that bridge all of these years going to and from town. And so that was how I found out about the bridge in San Saba. Flynn's family photos not only documented the various bridges built, they also revealed the unique culture and lifestyle of a turn-of-the-century bridge building company. William had purchased a tent to use to house his workers for meals. They had bunk beds which could be disassembled and reassembled at different locations. These are, are pipe that were used in the construction of the bridges. Yeah. That's, that's that tent and the, the cook stove. You can see the smoke coming up from the cook stove. And it may be one of these posts. No, it's this post right here, I think. That if you blow it up on Photoshop, there's a raccoon sitting on the top of it. By the fall of 2005, the beverage would begin its final transformation. With funding from the Historic Bridge Preservation Program, and approval of plans by the State Historic Preservation Officer, work to convert the Beveridge Bridge to pedestrian use only was underway. The bridge would receive new parallel wire cables, decking and anchors. The first phase would establish new pier footings and foundations. The foundations would be large enough to support both the existing original towers and also temporary towers for the duration of construction. February 9th and we're just about finished with the first stage of this project. We got all our foundation work in and I'm real glad to see it in. It's looking real good to me. Um, we've got our anchorages in place to get ready for the new cables and we've got our pier footings in place. And 
I think we've made real good progress up to this point. Cables for suspension bridges like the beverage are not something in ample supply at a warehouse. They have to be fabricated from scratch. TxDOT called on Willow Lamb International in Muskogee, Oklahoma, who had previous experience working on wire suspension bridges in Texas. The process of spinning the cable, you need to ensure that all the wires have the same tension on them so that when they are bound together and then put in place, that you don't have some wires that are slack and some wires that are tight so that those tight wires would break sooner than the rest of them and your cable doesn't uh, develop its full strength. To further ensure the cable's strength, samples were produced in their design sockets. The samples were then brought to the Ferguson Structural Engineering Laboratory at the University of Texas at Austin, where graduate students would test the cables to failure. Without applying any more pressure, I want to see what happens. The testing proved reassuring. The ultimate strength of the fabricated cable was greater than the strength of the individual wires. Back at the bridge, the beverage is prepared to receive its new cables. Once the new cable was positioned on the temporary towers and secured to the anchors, the team's focus turned to the original towers, specifically the saddle cable supports. To Charles Walker's surprise, William Flynn's original design was well intact and still functioning. And the casting up on top has the same cutout, about the same depth, the same width. Those two little roller bearings set up like that, so that provides the stop. So it has about the ability to roll three inches either way, and then it stops. And it still functions great. After the saddles and bearings are cleaned and reinstalled, the cables are lowered onto the original towers. The temporary towers are disassembled, and the bridge receives a new paint job and new surface decking. Restored to its former glory, the Beverage Bridge will remain a link to the past for future generations. I'm just real pleased with the, with the way the bridge looks. We also put quite a bit of load on it. We put uh, five construction vehicles on the bridge. It was carrying about half of its design load. I think we have a, a great product because, in large measure, because of the willingness of the um, contractors. Because you always discover things in the process of taking apart an old bridge like this that you didn't anticipate and things have gone incredibly smoothly. I've crossed this bridge all my life and when the first time that we got close enough to it that we could read the sign, we saw that it, it was the name of the builder and the builder when the bridge was uh, built and that Flynn and Warrior were the bridge builders and we knew Mr. Flynn's great-grandson. And that was a very exciting time for me and my husband because 
Mr. Flynn's grandson and my husband worked together. But as a child in a car, I certainly didn't know that that didn't say Beverage Bridge. So. And my mother probably never knew what it said. And I think she would have been totally amazed that we had made contact with, with the great-grandson. I had friends here, two ladies once from Louisiana, New Orleans area, and we were standing on the bridge when a car came across it. And I really thought one of the ladies was going to jump in the river. She was petrified of the waving of the bridge. I assured her that it would not fall through. I see beauty. And I see, I see 1896 reconstructed in today's time to last another hundred years without a doubt. And I see happiness. And I think the my ancestors and my neighbors that, that traveled this bridge long before my time would be amazed that it's still standing and it has been preserved to look like this. And I grew up about three miles north of here and crossed it almost every day as a youngster. This is a grand old bridge. That bridge, I was remember when I was going to school, it did rain in Sun Saba one time. You know, we're so dry now, we've almost forgotten what it looks like, but uh, it did rain a lot. And those roads at the corners were slanted and you'd start around in the car and you'd slide down to the corner and get stuck. And everybody would get out and push and we'd push it around the corner. Then we'd go a little further and there were a lot of corners. And you'd do that on the next corner. So we decided it would be easier to ride the horses than to push the car to town. <laughs> so we, uh, uh, rode the horses, but when they got to the bridge, we had to get off and lead them across. They would not go across the bridge. That just really would spook on that. Why would that be, you think? Well, it wasn't solid under their feet like the ground. <laughs> when I was learning to drive, it was uh, pretty dangerous to be with me on that bridge because I don't know I'd want to look at the water and I, the car would go toward the edge of the bridge but uh, uh, we kids tried to see how quickly we could get to town without you know uh, spent losing any time and go as fast as we could all the way to town and it was not very safe but we lived through it the Lord looks after <laughs> children <laughs> I've lived in San Saba for 95 years, except when I was in college. And I think it's the greatest place in the world. I still don't want to be in New York City or anywhere like that. <laughs> I like our little town. The younger generation, they don't pay much attention to progress because it's always with them. And when they see these older structures, they realize more of the heritage behind it all. And if we destroy all the past history, the younger generation aren't going to know the, the troubles we went through to get everything like it is. I think it's wonderful. And, and you know, there are a lot of old timers like Betty Jo and me <laughs> and and they like to come back and see things that they remember so I, I think it's I think it's really a step forward to keep some of the old The bridge. I think they did a really good job. I was just looking at the underpinnings of it, which have been changed, but it doesn't surprise me. Uh, I doubt if they could have put it back, the original. I doubt if the inspectors would have passed it. <laughs> I'm James Wilson, the mate supervisor here in San Saba. 
text out in Brownwood District. And I like to see more things happen like this. It's, it's been beneficial. Uh, it's to preserve our history. Uh, I think that's something we need to do. Our family came from Alabama in 1890, and this was built in 1896. And uh, we lived, uh, my grandfather lived out here. He first lived down on the river, and then a rise came and got the well underwater, and they got afraid of typhoid. So they went up three miles away from the river and built another house and uh, lived out there until they built the house in town. And when my mother and daddy married, they moved to the country. That's where I grew up five miles on this road and cross this bridge twice a day, every day, or four times, you know, going to town and back twice. We'd be going over it and all it has served us well. I'm Lisa Hart with TxDOT. I work for the Environmental Affairs Division and um, I supervise a, a group of staff members, historians and archaeologists. And so this is what, do you, what do you think of this? I think it's amazing. I think we're really lucky to have had uh, the right kind of funding come along at the right time to be able to do this and then to find the, the people with the technical expertise to pull it off. You know, there, there aren't that many people that have had experience working on these kind of bridges and dealing with uh, the wire cabling. And so we're really fortunate to have had everything come together at one time. I was walking across campus one day. Lamar was the, Joe Hansen was the Dean of Arts and Sciences. And he saw me and said, Tim Flynn, do you know anything about any bridges built by somebody named Flynn? I said, yes, it's my great grandfather. And he said, well, there's one down there at San Saba. And he noticed there was a sign. And he thought about that for a while and decided he'd come back here and get me that sign and brought a ladder and climbed up and discovered that it had been welded in place. And that's the only reason you still have that sign. <laughs> Otherwise, it had been in my barn. <laughs> well, I'm Charles Walker, and I work in the bridge division, and one of my assignments was to do the restoration on the, on the beverage bridge. And um, so it's, we've worked on it for uh, quite a while to figure out exactly what to do, and we ended up doing a restoration that brings it back to the condition it was in um, after a 1938 restoration, which is working with the, all the pieces that are available to us. And um, we probably wouldn't be able to uh, have done the project if we didn't have the experience of Walt Lambert, who's right here. Um, Walt has worked on two other Texas suspension bridges. Um, one is the Regency Bridge not too far from here and the first one he worked on was the Royal Gorge Bridge and uh, I call that a Texas bridge because it was built by a Texas bridge builder in the same tradition as, as the um, a Beverage Bridge. It's really an honor to be here to see something that I got to do so I, but thank you all for coming so it's nice to see people enjoying a beautiful bridge. I too am from China Creek and Mrs. Miller and I were, our, our fathers were neighbors, and we've, I've crossed this bridge all of my life. And it's such a beautiful testament to what our forefathers built and then what our ancestors crossed. I said yesterday to Tim, I just wish that those people that came in their horses and buggies and rode their horses and then wagons and the little Model T's and Model A's and, and the rattle trap cars that we had back in World War II that rattled across this bridge had the opportunity to see it today and, and know that it's, it's been preserved and it will be here much longer than I think most of us that were, are here. It will last a long time. I'm so grateful to TxDOT for saving it and for the work that they have done for us. That means a lot to all of us in San Saba County. Somebody's hiding behind you, Walt. I told you. I told you. I'm not one of the bunch. I just are now. <laughs> well, that's fine. You stay in there. Yeah, I'm James Long, Gibson Associates. Uh, Gibson Associates is a general contractor that worked on the bridge. 
and uh, I was the project manager on the bridge. Lynn Houston was the superintendent on the bridge, and uh, we enjoyed working on it. It was a great job. It turned out beautiful. I think everybody likes it, and it was a fun job. It really was a fun job. My grandfather's county. It is pretty.